Morning all, I um, just wanted to answer this question from um, <clears throat> FXception and the first question was, um, well this question here is what I'm really focusing on, is if you have fundamentals that conflict with risk on off sentiment, well basically risk off sentiment, because risk on is, is pretty much when the fundamentals are in play, um, which direction should you trade in, which one prevails over the other, especially if we look uh, at obvious daily supply and demand zone. So first of all, you've got to make a choice yeah, of what you're trading. So are you trading um, risk off, right? And if you are, then obviously you're going to be looking at the JPY. Yeah. Or the Swiss franc. Yeah. So those, these two currencies are safe haven currencies and they should strengthen in a risk off environment so they will you know tend to strengthen yeah now depending on the risk of sentiment yeah um some risk of sentiments can last or risk of sentiment can last you know a week a month it can last you know a, a while depending on obviously what the sentiment is doesn't mean that you're not going to get pullbacks of course you know within those within that risk of sentiment you're going to get profit taking you're going to get pullbacks just like any market just for example like in a risk on market you know when when the risk is on you're going to get pullbacks etc nothing goes up or down forever but the point i'm trying to make is this um Let's say, for example, well, right now, the Swiss franc is number six on the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, yeah? And let's say, for example, we want to be, uh, you know, I'm wearing, I'm still in the uh, uh, dollar Swiss from the absolute lows, by the way, yeah? Um, and But let's just say, for example, um, you know, we want to be buyers as the dollar is number one, yeah? Now, there could be this um, coronavirus that's going on right now yeah and what that do, what that, what that's doing yeah on the dollar swiss is it's strengthening the swiss franc yeah so for example there might be a demand zone here right and you might not necessarily get you might get in or you might not get an entry etc but you might lose that one let's say yeah because risk is off and the swiss franc tends to strengthen so then you know we come down into another demand zone yeah and risk is still off you know there's, there's still people you know um being afflicted by the coronavirus, worst case scenario, you know, I think the death toll is rising. Um, and that's really unfortunate, you know, for those family and, and people out there. And, um, you know, let's say for example, prices come down here, yeah? And, um, you know, we start to, you know, enter into a trade here and, um, you know, this doesn't work, for example, right? Now, what's happening and what people tend to not, you know, t realize is that the price, yeah, you're getting, uh, you know, the, the fundamentals are remaining the same as far as, you know, economically, GDP, inflation, interest rates, and others. Why is in our fundamental analysis, especially the, the Swiss franc is still um, uh, 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 terrible compared to something like, for example, the, the dollar, yeah? So what this is actually doing is it's allowing us to buy, right, for, a cheaper price let's say for example two we tried at four and then maybe we tried at seven yeah now we lose two trades fine yeah losing isn't you know um, win rates isn't isn't what we're concerned with it's more about risk reward and understanding what is value so if prices come down here now to this point and you have a um you know let's say for example the virus has been contained there's a uh, vaccine that's been developed and um, you know everything now is looking um, much better in China, right? The dollar, because the Swiss franc has you know obviously increased in strength. Then what happens is everything reverts back to you know risk on again, yeah. So risk on, yeah. In the risk on environment, that's where the dollar, which is number one. And we look at, you know, uh, what we're getting, for example, interest rates where, you know, the dollar is like 1.75 and the Swiss franc, I think, is like minus 0.75, right? That's when traders are going to be like, now, oh, you know what? I want, you know, a return on my money. Where am I going to put my, where am I going to place my money? I'm putting it back into, you know, the dollar, all right? And so on and so forth, yeah? So 
that's where this now becomes an absolute bargain price at this demand zone and that's where you get your you know five you know six seven ten to one type trades yeah it's you yeah. know not all the time you know every single demand zone is going to work depending on risk on and risk off we have to understand which way we want to be you know trading what traders tend to do is try to try to go low and then go high and then pick the lows and then go direction what you want to do for me anyway uh, right is what i tend to do i would say 80 90 percent of the time is i trade in the direction of the fundamentals what are the numbers saying what are the hard figures you know gdp you know interest um interest rates and inflation right that's what i'm more concerned about negative sentiment yeah will push prices lower to where i can get a much better risk reward right because that's going to be seen as an absolute bargain you know if the um um corona corona virus yeah um you know is contained and there is a vaccine yeah so there's opportunities which way should you trade if you want to take advantage of maybe some short-term risk off sentiment then fine brilliant you know you, you know do that if you want to do that me personally i'm not chasing you know risk off and risk on sentiment yeah because it makes things uh, a bit more difficult day to day yeah i'm not trying to um I'm trying to take the, the basically the best trades and trying to identify value at the end of the day. That's what we're that's what we're doing. We're identifying what bargain prices, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to try and trade both ways sometimes is is a lot of times is very you know challenging. We want to make things as easier as possible on on us, yeah. So identify potential bargain zones through demand zones. Um, and then what we want to do is trade in the direction. So I don't mind losing two or three trades to understand that I'm going to be getting, you know, uh, five, six, seven, eight, ten to ones, twelve to ones, um, you know, in in the future, if you know what I mean. So um, it's a decision that you have to make. And remember that risk off can last if 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 you know the the, the, the uh, coronavirus goes on for the next you know few months. Yeah, then unfortunately that's just what it is, if you know what I mean. Um, doesn't mean that you're not gonna get pullbacks and not be able to make any money here because for example, we know that um uh you know we entered you know a couple of positions, you know, we placed them where we placed them and we might, you know, win win one and lose one, for example. We're still up, we might not necessarily get the runners that we need, if you know what I mean, at these levels, right? Because you know, prices have to search for liquidity too as well. So prices can't just keep going down and down and down. There's going to be stop hunting involved, you know, to the other side, etc., and then price is going to go down. If we buy around here, we potentially, and you know, we can make some profit potentially on the the, the, the stop hunts against us, if you know what I mean. Because markets don't always trend forever. Markets going to from trending to ranging markets, as we know. Um, so we can take advantage of those periods. We might not necessarily get the big runners, we might get maybe three, four to ones um, on those types of trades, but eventually we're going to get these big trades, these 10, 15 to one type trades, yeah? So we've already had a few of them um, this this month. I'm in one um, on the uh, uh, Swiss yen. Uh, we had one on the, um, uh, the Euro yen, right? Where we picked off the absolute highs and stuff like that. Uh, the um the dollar swiss for example we're in that one um the the pound yen right in that one uh, uh there was the the euro dollar yeah we were in you know i said missed that one but that was an opportunity to get um you know for um good maybe nine ten to one type trades with there's, there's been quite a few of those so don't worry. Every month, there's there's an opportunity to get into you know um, these types of trades, these runner type trades. Whether it's risk on or risk off, you have to decide which trader you want to be. And don't try, don't switch from day to day. If you know what I mean, like be consistent in what it is that you want to do. Set out your plan. If you say in your plan, then I'm going to trade risk on, yeah, and risk off, right? And then you're going to have to define also in your plan what risk off events you're gonna be trading. So let's say for example, I'm not, I'm not gonna trade anything that involves war, yeah? Or, or I am gonna trade, trade, trade something that involves war. Uh, politics, yeah? So politics and elections, right? Uh, right, am I gonna be trading that or I'm not gonna be trading that? So go a bit deeper into your, um, you know, your, your 
your uh, your plan about what risk events you are or may not want to trade because not, not everything you want to you know make money off of do you, do you want to make money off of uh you know death for example you know some people you know morally don't want to make money off of death so um yeah you have to really um uh, uh really kind of maybe dig a bit deeper and stuff like that so Again, it's up to the individual. I can't tell you what to do. I can tell you what I do. And, you know, the majority of the time I will um, look to, um, if I'm already in a trade, let's say, for example, I'm already in a trade. So we was in the uh, uh, pound yen, right? And um, we were shorting, obviously, the pound due to, you know, uh, Brexit and interest rate cuts, right? Now, let's say, for example, um, and the risk that is associated with that against the yen, yeah? So this was, it was, I think at the time, what was it, seven versus four, yeah? So that's a you know, decent trade, not the best trade, but a decent one to the short side. Then as we were in the, the, the yen, yeah, then the coronavirus came along. Now, I'm not, you know, a, a buyer of the, um, I, I'm not necessarily trading the yen due to, you know, the coronavirus, right? But I was already in the, the yen trade. Now, if you're already in the yen trade, yeah, or, or, or buying the yen and then something happens where morally it's it's against your you know your code of conduct for example you're like i don't want to make money off of, off of you know people dying and death and things like that yeah um and you're already in that trade then you have a decision to make yeah do you want to hold you know the trade still because you were already in it from before yeah or do you want to come out of that trade yeah and say you know what morally it's against you know what I stand for and things like that. So there's those types of questions you have to you know you have to ask and answer you know for yourself. So um, so yeah, um, that is. I hope that's really answered you know your question. Um, F exception and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it for now. All right, take care.